morning friends welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new my name is Mel and today I bring you my first 48 hour readathon vlog yes you heard it right it is a reading vlog and it is also a 48 hour readathon vlog now every month my friends and I Christine Kristen and Jalisa we all do a 24 hour readathon at the end of every month that gives us plenty of time to just read together read with you guys do some reading sprints push through our TBRs and just have a lot of fun as a community which I personally really really love and this month I decided to do it a little bit differently at least for myself now I am obviously doing the 24 hour readathon with my friends however I do want to take it a bit more lightly you guys know me I am always team hashtag no sleep I don't sleep. I don't eat during readathons. I am not promoting unhealthy habits, but I usually push myself really, really hard during readathons because I generally want to read as much as I can. I always kind of want to best myself, read more pages than I did last time. And the last few times that approach hasn't really worked out for me. I haven't really had a great time. I always end up feeling absolutely horrible the day after. And so I just want to take it a little bit slower, but still read a lot. So I think this is going to be my course of action and again my friends are with me in the terms that we just wanted to make this round a little bit more for ourselves we just wanted to read with each other on zoom on facetime just watch movies so this time around it's just gonna be super cozy super chill just no craziness as we typically do but because of that reason because we are taking it extra chill i was chatting with my patreons and with my friends as well and i was just like what happens if we make this into a 48 hour thing i've always wanted to attempt this i think every time a readathon ends in my head I'm always like I can read some more I can finish another book I can go on for an extra day and I've actually never put it to the test so today I'm gonna put it to the test and I'm gonna be reading for 48 hours. The readathon does start at 12 a.m. EST, which is an hour ahead of where I am at. So it starts at 11 p.m. my time. So today, Friday. And let's talk about reading plans for the next 24 hours. I am very excited about, I am very excited about my TBR. So I do have Take a Hint, Danny Brown, which is the second book in this one. We obviously follow Danny Brown. Oh wait, he's a bodyguard and he rescues Danny from a workplace fire drill gone wrong. It's a fake relationship trope from what I am seeing at the back of the book. So we'll see how this one goes. I love fake dating. That lends itself for a lot of angst and just, oh, a lot of tension that I am just here for. And then we have Eve Brown, which I think this one is going to be my favorite out of all of them. I have loved Eve ever since she first appeared on the first book in Chloe Brown. She literally stole my heart the minute she walked into Chloe's apartment singing Defying Gravity from Wicked. I was just like, sis, you have my heart. And then besides that it is set in a bed and breakfast. The love interest is said to be very grumpy and Eve is the only option that he has to hire as a chef because he needs a chef and I am just really really excited for this one in particular. I obviously always have a graphic novel on deck when I need a little bit of rest and this is Fens Volume 2. I loved Fens Volume 1. I rated it five stars when I read it. I also read that during a readathon when I was feeling kind of slumpy when I didn't really feel like reading throughout the readathon and so this is always a lifesaver when again I don't want to read a lot of prose. And then I also have Vicious Spirits by Kat Cho. I did read Wicked Fox, which is right behind me. I did read that this month. Rated it five stars as well. I just really enjoyed the entirety of the lore and folklore behind the Gumiho, Mi Young's journey with Ji Hoon, and a lot of familiar dynamics that I didn't expect at all in that book that I just really, really enjoyed. Also ended in a cliffhanger, which I didn't expect at all either. I thought it would be self-contained to one book. And this is supposedly like the companion book. After that ending, I'm going to assume that this has like an overarching conflict plot with the first book. So it does connect. It does, I guess, resolve in this one. However, in this one, we follow Junu and Sumin, which are some of the side characters in the first one. And Junu is a uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, Dokaibi. He is basically a Korean goblin. Uh, I just, he's so charming in the first book. And so this, I think, will have a lot of romance based on the synopsis because it does say that Juno wonders if Somin could love him if he deserved it as much as I guess he fancies her. And so I do think this is going to be a little bit more romance heavy, perhaps. And then last but not least, if you couldn't already tell by the big empty blob of nothing right there at the top, I am reading 
Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. I managed to snag up this first edition hardcover that is just, oh my god, I can't get over it. And I don't know much about this. It is very vague, like the way that people talk about this book, it is very mysterious, very ominous, very just nothing. All I know is that this follows Laszlo Strange, given the title, Strange the Dreamer, and he dreams about the lost city of Weep that people have seemingly forgot about. Like, nobody remembers the lost city of Weep. Nobody knows what it is. There is no record of it. And so I'm gonna guess that Laszlo is going to embark on this journey of trying and figuring out what exactly this lost city is. So ambitious as always, this is my pile for the 48 hour readathon. Again, I need to get into the mindset that this is 48 hours and not 24. So I do think I have more than enough time to finish these. I have finished this amount of books in 24 hours. So I shall chat with you guys once the readathon starts. So again, in about two hours. I am very excited and I hope that you guys are excited too. this because freaking Delisa, I swear to God. <laughs> When somebody doesn't respond in the group chat, Delisa will literally blast them up. She literally blasted up the group to like, Crispy, where are you at? Where are you at? And then she did it again. <laughs> I'm cracking up. I literally cannot. I have got the energy drink right here on deck. I also have water. And then I have got the goldfish because you can't start a readathon without a good snack. It's really fun time. I'm so excited. Okay, let's do it. Hi Vlog! Hi Vlog! Hi Vlog! guys, first update of the vlog. I have been reading Strange for not that long. I am on page 25 and it's going great first off. Like I already have a lot of annotations. I was talking to Jaleesa earlier because all of my friends have DNF'd Strange. Like I was a little bit skeptical going into it because I was like either people hate this book or they love it. And I knew because I'd read Addy and Addy also had kind of like lyrical writing that this was potentially something that I could love. And I was telling Jaleesa earlier how I guess one of my biggest fears has always been to die without making some sort of impact and being forgotten. And it's super silly, but I've always had that fear since I was super young. And so there's something about lyrical writing and the way that it always talks about like dreams and it talks about being remembered or forgotten that just there's just something about lyrical writing that strikes a chord with me and that just hits very close to home and so I typically enjoy lyrical writing so happy to report it is very interesting so far I just have so many great quotes that I have annotated so far and the first one was on chapter one names may be lost or forgotten no one knew that better than Laszlo Strange he'd had another name first First, but it had died like a song with no one left to sing it. At that time when I was reading that, I was literally talking to Jaleesa simultaneously and I was like, that's my fear. And like, I love how lyrical writing always kind of brings that topic forth. And I read that right as I said it and I was like, damn. But then it says, it was impossible, of course. But when did that ever stop any dreamer? from dreaming. And just saying that, it just makes me want to like tear up and like cry. Just reading that, it not only felt, and it just gave me chills reading it because of course like great writing, but it just felt very validating at the same time. And sometimes when you read something, depending on, you know, whether you can relate to it or not, it's just stuff that you need to hear. I am definitely gonna take this at my own pace. I'm not gonna rush through it. I'm just gonna read it. I don't wanna jinx it and say my prediction for the rating, but I think it's pretty clear with how 
how the annotations are going as to what I think the reading might be. Hello everyone, update, update. It is currently 3.46 a.m. Don't know if you guys can see that, but it's 3.46 a.m. And I just made it to page 107 of strange i am obviously taking this really slow in comparison to what i've done in the past with my readathons and so i am really loving this and i've decided to write like some of my favorite quotes from strange and another one that i found is who had ever expended so much passion on a dream only to stand helpless as it was granted to others it's just so beautiful and i really hate and love i guess at the same time how Laszlo is treated. Laszlo is definitely treated as if he was nothing and he definitely, even though he knows that he knows stuff, like he knows his stories and he knows the lore and he knows the history behind the lost city of Weep and he's even learned the language, he has a lot of imposter syndrome and that imposter syndrome has been installed in him based on the belief that this world has and so oftentimes he feels inadequate in what he's doing even though he knows that he is knowledgeable and it was really uh, it really hit me hard i'm gonna try and look for that scene he was unqualified the fact was if he did get in to see the god slayer he didn't even know what he would say what could he say to recommend himself. I know a lot of stories. It was the first time he ever felt for himself a measure of the contempt others felt for him. And then it follows, who had ever expended so much passion on a dream only to stand helpless as it was granted to others. Completely understand his sense of inadequacy. I think that definitely stems from the fact that, you know, librarians and, and the people who do kind of a similar work style that, that he carries through in this world. People don't study and they're just basically slaves to the higher up people, to the people in power. And if you're not into the educational system, if you're not doing anything scholarly, if you're not an alchemist, if you know a scholar, or if you're not a writer, then your life is basically forfeit. It doesn't mean anything. And I think it's really interesting. And I don't know if it's intentional to create that commentary on how the world works nowadays as well, where a lot of people feel inadequate because they haven't gone to school because they haven't gone to college and the reality is that doesn't mean anything and oftentimes i've just found myself nodding in i can relate to these characters and i think that's always fantastic when you have an incredibly fantastical setting that the characters are still so human that you can relate to them as if they were regular real life people and i think that's fantastic writing i really cannot wait to see him thrive i can't wait to see him prove everybody wrong and i just also met sarai S S sarai sarai her and her group of friends are just so interesting to me how they all obviously possess different powers and different abilities how they're all so young but they've been having to grow up in a world that is so unlike what they've experienced before that is so, I guess, standoffish to them based on how they arrive to this land. I'm guessing that Sarai and Strange, like Laszlo, are gonna get into some sort of entanglement. And there was also a lot of talk right at the beginning that people have two hearts and you can live even if one of them doesn't beat, but one of them is set to contain kind of your essence and your soul and your ability to love. And Sarai said that both her hearts were damaged and that she doesn't feel the way that she should. And I am going to take a gamble and say that obviously Laszlo is going to be the one to make her feel something for the first time in forever. I think what truly shines here the most, the world is truly fantastic. You truly get lost in this like so easily. I'm going to go back to reading a little bit and then I'm going to take the makeup off. So I just took off my makeup and honestly, I'm feeling quite tired. Like as I was taking off my makeup, I'm like, I'm not that tired. Like I can keep reading. And now that I've sat down, I'm like, do I want to keep reading? Do I want to sleep? Like, I don't know what I want to do. They're both asleep. Literally, Kristen, turn off her light. Delisa, just asleep, asleep. So, you know, 
they've crashed, they've given in to the sleep, and I'm very close to doing so too. Hello, hello friends. So it is currently 7.51, hello. I slept for three or so hours, but I am going to sit back down and I am going to continue strange. A little bit of an update I haven't updated you in quite a bit but I look like a potato sack quite literally I didn't even realize that I was dressed like a potato sack until I started doing this and I started updating y'all so I do be looking a little bit like potato sack and then I also have my blankie which is also the color of a potato stack so I think today's emoji for the video is gonna be a potato so leave a potato emoji if you're watching this anyways a little bit of an update into strange of the dreamer like obviously given the fact that the writing is very lyrical the story is very slow I don't mind those types of stories I just like the build-up I like having that tension up until the climax happens I love it impatiently waiting for the moment where Sarai and Laszlo actually meet they've met in Laszlo's dreams now and the way that Laszlo views the citadel or the lost city of Weep which by the way they have a citadel and they don't really know how to define it sometimes it's a very hopeful beautiful place and sometimes it's like a horrible place but if you guys don't know my patreon like we call ourselves the citadel so just I'd never seen it in a book before and the fact that in here we've got a citadel it's just it's pretty cool it's the first time that I have encountered one of those things in a book so that is generally pretty cool however I love the way that Laszlo views the lost city of Weep with so, with so much hope and just love and yearning for something greater and I don't know exactly how Laszlo is going to be the salvation for the lost city of Weep but Sarai definitely has a fascination with Laszlo because he is one of a kind but I also like that it's not necessarily like the chosen one trope but rather Laszlo or at least so far it's not it may turn into it and I really wouldn't mind it either I just really like Laszlo as a character but I just like that he comes from nothing he has nothing and he has tried to make the most out of nothing and it's just very encouraging when you read characters like that that are continuously bettering themselves despite all odds being being against them and I feel like Laszlo really does represent that so I am just really enjoying my time here and I am super excited because actually in June my patrons and I are buddy reading Daughter of Smoke and Bone so I definitely want to read more Lainey Taylor going forward I don't know how different it'll be but I've never read Daughter of Smoke and Bone so definitely excited to dive into that one too once the time comes but this is going great and I also have a little haul situation for you guys I typically don't do hauls during read because I just don't think it's the time but honestly this time around I'm taking it so chill that it more so feels like a weekend reading vlog rather than anything else so I do have four books to show you and then something that is not a book but it's still equally exciting I got this really cool thing sent to me by birthday candles and it is obviously a candle but this is a birthday candle meaning that this you choose your birth date and this the scent is basically catered towards your astrology sign based on a lot of different things based on the date that you were born and so it is the most stunning thing ever I also love the size it's like a very big candle I love burning candles as I journal as I read just when I'm doing anything I just like to turn on a candle and it's been a while since I bought one so this was perfect and I just really love how it's almost personalized again to you depending on when and where you were born and so it has a little bit of info at the back about 
your birthday. I just think this is pretty cool. So thank you so much to Birthday Candles for sending this my way. And I also have, again, four books to show you guys, which I thought it would be cool, including it in this vlog. I did buy two books during sprints last week, and the first one is Desperate Measures by Katie Robert. I have heard a lot about this book. Katie Robert, I mean, she mainly writes, I think it's erotica romance, but these ones are very particular in the sense that this is Disney villains getting with the Disney heroes. And so in this one, we follow Jafar and Jasmine, and I believe this is not like a willing situation at first. This says, my savior or my ruin, one night and my entire life went up in flames, all because of him, Jafar. As my world burned down around me, he offered me a choice, walk away with nothing but my freedom or rise to his challenge and win my fortune back. I bargained. I lost. I have heard incredible things about this, strangely enough. I know some of my Patreons have loved this book and have just really enjoyed their time. So I just thought I'd go ahead, bite the bullet, read this, just for the memes, just for the memories, just for all of it and see what I think. So I gave in, bought this. And then I also bought, which is exciting, I finally also gave in, Gideon the Ninth. And I really don't know anything about this besides the catchphrase that a lot of people use, and that is lesbian necromancers in space. I also know there's a poly ship in here so I don't know how accurate that'll be in terms of like is there really a polyamorous relationship don't know but I do know this is a lot of people's favorites and I just thought I'd finally get this it also has a skull in the dust jacket which I think is pretty cool and I am pretty sure I am body reading this with Jaleesa in June which I am definitely very excited about and last but not least I have two books that were sent to me by one of you lovely people and the first one is Fat Chance Charlie Vega by Cristal Maldonado and I I am just really excited for this. When I first heard of this book, I just really liked the premise of it. Charlie Vega is a lot of things. Smart, funny, artistic, ambitious, fat. People sometimes have a problem with that last one, especially her mom. Charlie wants a good relationship with her body, but it's hard, and her mom leaving a billion weight loss shakes on her dresser doesn't help. The world and everyone in it have ideas about what she should look like. Thinner, lighter, slimmer face, straighter hair, be smaller, be wider, be quieter. But there's one person who's always in Charlie's corner, her best friend Amelia. Slim, popular, athletic. So when Charlie starts a tentative relationship with cute classmate Brian, the first worthwhile guy to notice her, Everything is perfect until she learns one thing. He asked Amelia out first. I have a feeling that this book is gonna make me cry. I relate to a lot of things in here. When I was growing up, I was never the slimmest kid. And if there is one thing that, if you guys don't know, a lot of things that are very typical in Latin households, moms and just family members, commenting on your weight and commenting on your appearance. And I don't know if it's the same for everyone, but here in Panama, definitely once you walk into a family reunion, all of your uncles, cousins, grandparents, everybody is saying, oh, you've gained weight or oh, you've lost weight. What is going on there? So I think it's a very big issue with again, stereotypes and societal views that are within the Latin community regarding weight. And so I really am excited to read this and see what I think. And they also sent Blitzed by Alexa Martin my way. This is part of the Intercepted series. I don't think this is the last one. I do believe there's another one after this, maybe, from Cassidy. Thank you so much. That is literally the sweetest thing ever. And I am glad that you love it here. I love it here too. I always say it. So thank you so much for sending those my way. And yes, those are all of the updates that I have for you guys guys right now. Vlog off for now. Keep on reading. Keep on watching this movie. Keep on vibing. And I shall see you guys once I have updates. Hi, 
Um, I slept for almost 10 hours <laughs> last night. So hello, I'm here. And I do have some updates for you if that counts for anything, but I did sleep a lot. Finished Strange the Dreamer, obviously. It clearly went incredibly well. I gave this five out of five stars. I can totally see why people spiraled with this ending. I don't think I get shocked with endings very easily. Like, yes, I cry and like, yes, I feel the emotions, but I don't necessarily feel desperate very often to kind of go into the next one immediately. So I did finish it and the ending was wild. I kind of predicted it though, so it didn't feel as surprising as it could have if I hadn't like known anything about it. So I just loved it. I loved the twist. I think it's super interesting and I am dying to see how they're going to kind of explain everything and world build even more in book two. I just, oh, I was crying with the ending. I did record some of it. It literally broke my heart though. I didn't expect one of those things to happen. I was just expecting somebody to come up and kind of just say like, <laughs> psych punked pranked it's alive and it wasn't it actually happened and so the ending for this was incredible in fact the later third of this book was absolutely fantastic. I think definitely my favorite parts of the book were the beginning and the last third. I think those two were super strong and don't get me wrong, the middle was incredibly strong too, but there was just something so poetic about the way that the story started and ended that just struck a chord with me. And so I adored this, the writing is literally everything in here. I just, it further solidified my thought that I genuinely love lyrical writing. So poetic, just so many great things in here. So I can now see also why people have such difficulty talking about this book because yes, although there is a lot of plot in here, it's just how do you explain this without spoiling it and without giving away too much. I also really liked about this book that there wasn't one particular villain. Every person who was kind of the antagonist of the story was just morally gray and you can kind of see how they switch roles back and forth throughout the entirety of the story and you can kind of always question the whys and wheres of why they're the way they are and why they're evil or why they are just not being the greatest of people and I love how Sarai said it in the book she said you think good people don't commit bad actions like you think good people are always good that's not the way that the world works good people do the same things bad people do they just call it justice i love that line from the book it was oh my god it just oh my god it just hit all kinds of different it just hit you know it just hit so this one five out of five stars no question about it at some point i do want to reread this book and kind of see if i spot anything that i didn't spot the first time around so love this and i do have two copies on the way for Muse of Nightmares and I am thinking that I am going to wait until my matching copy of this gets here so that I can read that and annotate that one. So yes, I did finish Strange and then right before I crashed I did start Danny Brown and I am only 23 pages in. I am not annotating so far. I think with Chloe Brown, I realized very quickly that I did want to annotate. And I think there was something that struck a chord with me with the prologue of Chloe Brown that was just incredible for me. This one is much more comedic than Chloe was, or at least so far. It starts out and there's instantly the one-liners, there's instantly like the jokes, and there's instantly that banter, kind of sarcastic dynamic between characters characters that you guys know that I love, but that is not enough for me to want to annotate. And so I'm really enjoying this so far. It's been a really great start. It's been, again, very comedic, which is I feel what I needed after Strange, which Strange literally makes you ponder and question every single thing in your life. It's like such a reflective read. I just, it really messed me up halfway through because I was like, damn, this really be so philosophical. Anyway, I needed a touch of comedy, a touch of lightheartedness. So this is where we're at right now. What's up? So I am still on sprints right now, but just thought I'd come update you guys because I have been reading, reading, and I've been reading obviously Danny Brown and I am currently on page 214. So I've made quite a bit of progress. I only have this chunk left. So I'm confident that I can finish this in one and a half sprints because we're doing 45 minute sprints right now. And I am loving this, but not enough for it to be a five star. I, as always, 
always really like the dynamic between Chloe, Danny, and Eve. I think their sisterly bond is really strong and it really shows with the way that they interact with each other and even with the way that Danny told Saf, I never cancel anything with my family, I never cancel anything with my sisters. And that just really shows you the bond that they've been able to create as they were growing up. And I love that about them so, so much. I love tight familial dynamics. I also love Saf's relationship with his family. I love the fact that he's Pakistani, how much he loves his niece, Fatima. I just really have been, it's just been really endearing to see that. I just adore Saf so much. He's such a soft boy. He just wants to settle down and to, you know, make people happy and he is willing to help others not experience what he experienced with toxic masculinity and even with anxiety. He is just so open and raw as a human being and that is just stunning. I love that about him. I love how emotionally open he is, but I also love how how I guess he loves Danny because like he's definitely pining for Danny and I always switch between saying Danny and Danny, but I I just love how he is pining for her so hard and it's not because she is this gorgeous figure as everyone sees her but rather because she's kind of like the whole package she has the body and the intellect and the motivation and the familial dynamic as well that he really appreciates and so I just love the fact that Saf sees her as she is and that is exactly what he loves so that is just fantastic about this book I think my biggest issue though with Danny Brown is that this is more about Saf than it is about Danny. We know barely nothing based on this book about Danny. You don't know anything about her backstory. You don't know anything about Danny besides the fact that she wants to be a teacher. She has a BA and an MA and she's getting her PhD and that she is bi and of course she loves her sisters and she loves her best friend and she is a witch and you know all of that. But beside that, you don't really, at least not 200 pages in, which is the majority of the book, you don't understand why she's so closed off emotionally. You don't know any of the bigger details that would allow for character development, I guess, or would really allow Danny to be an established character. Danny still feels to me as a side character. She still feels the same way that she felt in Chloe Brown, like the snarky, incredibly smart sister that is obviously like she loves very deeply, I guess, but she doesn't necessarily show it. And beside that, you don't really know anything about Danny the way that I guess Chloe was developed as a character. So I think that is this book's major fault is the fact that Saf is much more developed as a character than Danny is. We know everything about Saf. You know where he comes from. You know what happened with his family, what his career was before being a security guard. You see everything about Saf and I just have a little bit of an issue with that being that he is more more prominent like the centerpiece of the story I guess because the book is supposed to be about Danny. I love Saf. Saf Central. Give me it. Love it. But that's not meant to be the purpose of the book so that's like my only I mean my big complaint about Danny Brown so far so I am loving this but I think story construction wise not as strong as Chloe was in my opinion I am definitely gonna finish this today and then I'm gonna jump into Fence Volume 2 Okay, you guys, so a little bit of an update. I managed to finish Danny Brown and I ended up giving it a 3.5. I think the ending was super cute. It definitely delivered on like the romance end of things, like the grand gesture. It was all really good. I just think my issue with Danny Brown was that 
a lot of revelations were made by the characters and the characters came to terms with a lot of things a lot of inner damage if you want to call it that or a lot of inner turmoil however i don't think the progress was there for them to reach that point and so a lot of it felt unearned in my opinion and so i just can't give it any anything higher than a 3.5 so that is the rating that i settled in for danny brown it was still really enjoyable though delivered a lot on the comedy end of things and i found that danny brown definitely felt a little bit smuttier than chloe brown did so if you're looking for like the smut i think this one was written a little bit better than chloe brown and i also started and finished Fens volume 2. You guys, don't sleep on Fens if you haven't yet. I just love it so freaking much. The friendship dynamics in here, fantastic. But I think what is really cool about Fens is the rivalry, sportmanship type of thing that is so interesting. And you can see how all of the characters are working towards bettering themselves as athletes, whether that's because they know where they can get better or because they lost a match or they found their match. And that just is something that is so enjoyable for some reason. The characters are also so lovable and I love how even if somebody is seemingly not the greatest person or seemingly not the best character, there is a lot of motivation that is driving those actions that we have yet to find out, but we definitely will. And it's just developed incredibly. I love the way that this progressed after the cliffhanger on volume one. It's just everything that I wanted and I found out that there's not three volumes, there's actually four, and there's actually a novelization that comes. I believe it's in the midst of this, but the story is like completely different and follows a different set of characters that I grew to love in volume two. So I definitely want to buy those two. I don't know if I'll buy them today or if I'll hold myself back, but I definitely do need to get those because I love Fence. It's, if I dare say, like my favorite comic, I'm gonna call it a comic because it is a comic as opposed to graphic novel but like this and Heartstopper are like my top two like right there I just find that Fence has been consistently a five star series so I gave Fence five stars no regrets no doubt about it don't sleep on it it is just chef's kiss don't know what else to say besides it's chef's kiss so now I'm going to start Eve Brown and this is going to be my fourth book of the readathon and then after this if I finish it today which I sh totally should I then I'm going to go into Vicious Spirits which I'm very excited for and we're still going strong Welcome to the... Mel is just chilling right now and it's been a day since the readathon. Hello. And I wouldn't say that I massively failed because I didn't fail. I did read three books. However, I didn't end up finishing Eve Brown. I am currently 160 pages into this, so I didn't get around to finishing this, but I will finish it maybe today. I am just here to give you the last update and then a wrap up this 48 hour readathon vlog because I do need to start another vlog where I actually finish this and then read something else. So this is what we're here for. So I am really, really enjoying Eve Brown. I am getting five stars feel from this. Like absolutely yes. I don't even need to think about, oh, I don't want to jinx myself or anything like that. I am just really enjoying my ride with Eve Brown. Definitely my favorite Brown sister as of yet. She's just so loving and accepting and she has a sass that yes, all of the Brown sisters have, but hers is really unmatched. And I think right off the bat, there were a lot of things that Eve has experienced that to me seemed a little bit more relatable in the sense of school and college and changing directions and paths a million different times and not really knowing what to do and people thinking that you're a failure and people having opinions about what you should be doing or should be saying. And so right off the bat, I instantly teared up with Eve Brown because it really just struck a chord and it was 
kind of like very personal for me to start reading this and just see that that was what it opened with and so I really like Eve I think as a character she I knew she was gonna be the one that I related to the most because instantly like the theater thing just instantly I went yes you're my girl you're you're that one person that I am just going to love and then beyond that I think career study wise I also align a lot with Eve and even aside from Eve Jacob and Mont who are the owner of the Better Breakfast and then the best friend. I really like their dynamic and I like how Mont is so willing to help out Jacob wherever he needs help because Jacob does have autism and so it's just really great to see that friendship there and to see that kind of love that they have for each other while still being very bantery and very comedic and just very funny and how Eve kind of fit into that place really extremely well and they instantly started bouncing off each other so well as characters and these characters definitely have a life of their own their voices are so distinct which I absolutely love I I like the cozy feel of like a bed and breakfast and the romance developing there. It's just been a great ride with Eve. I knew she was gonna be my favorite, hasn't disappointed me yet, and I hope that she doesn't. This is the last book that I have read in the readathon. I am kind of sad that I didn't finish this, but literally the moment that I hopped off my Patreon live stream, I literally sat down on the couch and I crashed. Like there was no way I was gonna get any reading done. And I do want to reattempt the 48 hour readathon situation to see if I can. You know, if I have some chance at redemption and actually sleep as little as possible and actually like make it as I've made readathons in the past. I will say though, based on how the last few weeks have been going for me, which have been super hectic, I really like the chill vibes that I got from this readathon. I found, you know, one of my new favorite books, Strange the Dreamer, and Fence Volume 2 was literally fan freaking tastic and I'm on the way of finding a new favorite book as well. So overall, it was a little bit slower, but I did find some great quality reads, which is the most important thing. It's quality over quantity, so that was really really great to experience and to see honestly how much I could push myself without pushing myself for 48 hours if that makes sense. So yes, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I think honestly out of all of my readathon vlogs, this is probably the one that updating wise I am the most proud of because if there is one thing that I kind of suck at during readathons is updating in a way where it actually feels substantial mostly because I'm just so hyper focused on reading that I just don't want to waste time on filming or anything and so I think this time around I kind of balanced out both the filming and the reading and actually feeding myself and taking care of myself during the readathon which was great and so I think this has been definitely my favorite readathon so far even if it was kind of the chillest most toned down one so if you did enjoy this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment down below what you read in the readathon if you participated or if you've read any of these books also let me know down below if you reach the end of the video let's leave some music note emojis down below in honor of our girl Eve Brown who is very much into music and theater let's leave some music notes microphones anything that reminds you of music let's leave all of that down below if you reach the end of the video don't forget to subscribe for more bookish content you guys know i am constantly uploading videos that i'm sure you won't want to miss i also live stream every friday doing weekly reading sprints and if you want more exclusive content more early access to videos exclusive access to me a discord server buddy reads book clubs videos that you are only going to see on patreon also i am planning on streaming some sims very very soon as well as animal crossing very soon so if you're also into the gaming and want to experience me go down this rabbit hole as well i do have a patreon we call ourselves the citadel and that is also linked down below as well as all of my social medias in case you'd like to join us or follow me anywhere all of those are down below and yeah i love you guys so so much and i shall see you on the next one bye guys